guys, uh, <coughs> DJ Benevolent Brandon here from the WCAL show One Metal Reigns. Uh, hanging out here at Stage AE, catching out, checking out the In Flames and Hell Yeah show that's coming through. That tour recently just started, I believe, two or three days ago. And with me today, I am fortunate enough to have Anders Friedman from In Flames here with me. Yeah. It's really great to meet you, buddy. Yeah. I've been I've been a long time fan of In Flames for a number of years. All right, cool. Thank you. It's funny, actually. Um, my very first experience with you guys was my first concert that I ever went to, which was Mayhem Fest in 2011. All right. When you guys played, I believe it was the stage right across from the one Machine Head was playing on. Oh well, yeah, yeah, that might be. I've so yeah. many shows out. Absolutely. Remember. <laughs> you guys have been you guys have been around for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was that very first show. I, I heard I, I, I saw your guys' name on the bill, and that was my first concert experience ever. And I'm like, oh well, this sounds like a really cool band. I checked out Come Clarity, and I instantly fell in love. Cool man. Instantly fell in love. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the lyrical inspiration for your newest album, Battles, which just released on? November 10th, if I'm correct? 11th. 11th. So it's been out a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the battles means basically, I'm talking about the inner struggles that we have, like everyone from really young age up until the day we die, basically, and the importance of uh, dealing with those things. Uh, uh, you know, you, you have to deal with the past so that you can embrace the future, you know? Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, you might miss opportunities. That's that's around you and and so on so uh, that is the 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 overall theme that every single song has you know dip into that a little bit almost like it's kind of like a it's the central theme of the album yes. okay that's cool yeah because I noticed that from your early discography all the way up until the uh, battles that was just recently released your uh, lyrical approach to writing songs has definitely changed over the years yeah, from the early very early stuff definitely yeah because if I'm correct the uh, the early stuff like Jester Race and Horacle were all about a mythology yeah, yeah and it's more fantasy based than than this now it's more about I mean I mean personal things you know and <clears throat> to be honest I know more about that stuff than I know about politics mythology uh, war, uh, all kinds of fancy Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I, so th this is closer to me, and I feel I can reach more of our fans this way. As well. Oh, absolutely! But did you back in the '90s? I'll try to I'll try to stick the early days yeah, yeah. questions as little as possible. No, that's fine. Because yeah. I know I know you're out here on tour with Hell Yeah to promote your new album, which is absolutely killer, by the way. But I still love all our albums, so yeah, I can talk about them too. That's fine. Yeah, it was it was running into Come Clarity. And then going back into Horacle and the Jester Race, especially, that I absolutely fell in love with your material. It's it's been a great inspiration of mine. Cool. It, I mean, as an as an upcoming audio engineer, right. it's I I love the sound of Clayman. Yeah, yeah. It's such a thick sound, but because of your um, your lyrical themes kind of shifting more into inner struggles here in the newer material. Did you find it difficult to write about mythology back in the 1990s, or? Uh, well, I ha had good help from uh, a friend of mine uh, who uh, I was in a band with called Dark Inquility mm -hmm. from then on. And they he, just played here last night, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they released an awesome new album as well. As yeah, well, so. uh, Thomas, really good. Really Hearing good. that and the Pitless live last night yeah. was amazing. Oh, cool, cool. It's too bad we miss, miss each other on this tour. They are like, as you said, a week ahead of us. But anyway, we were. Uh, he was. Uh, Nicholas and that man, he uh, he gave me a lot of help. I mean, they were way better uh, with me uh, than me with the English language yes. back, back back then. Uh, the way to uh, express myself, we we talked about it a lot. Like I told him in Swedish, and then he wrote it in English. That's uh, fair. So, but um, then when I started to write, it changed because I want to write about things that I know more of than. And, yeah, you know all these, you know, you have these thoughts with you, and then and then it was way closer to my heart than than those types of lyrics, and they they were good, yeah, for for that part of our era. Absolutely, uh, I another thing that I really noticed about your music is that um, from about sound tr uh, soundtrack of a play, uh, wow, uh, soundtrack to your escape. Sorry about that. From about soundtrack to your escape onwards. Um, you guys really relied heavily on synth leads. 
Well, it started already actually on Colony. We started to use parts of I it. Heard, I heard. I heard it was kind of like that. Then, then more in Clayman, but then from uh, Reroute, we start. We we sh- there was a lot of things that happened with the band. We changed producer. We changed studio, and we got a new team uh, around us. And we met up with uh, Orian Arnklu, who is the guy that's doing all the programming. Yes, course, and he's still doing it today. So that's from awesome. Reroute. Basically, we we added way more uh, uh, since and 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 so on. But they they are all of them are. I don't. We don't use them in the forefront and and. They there are a lot of loops and a lot of uh, like drum beats and stuff like that. And I mean that's why we don't have a keyboard player because I mean there's no point in pushing one button and then you have a loop because we don't have keyboard solos. We don't have that stuff and. Yeah, it's but used more as a textural um, addition. Oh yeah, yeah defi- definitely. And we don't That's we don't start with them as a writing source. We always start with a, a riff, like yes. a guitar. So, uh, but it's definitely a, a, a big part of our sound today, and I think it gives our sound uh, another dimension than if we would not have them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I know the periphery is getting really big into using that. They've kind of they've kind of done that from the start, where yeah. their entire rig is put it pretty much in just a uh, like a gig case. Right. Axe FXs, and they have a lap. They have a MacBook Pro running Pro Tools yeah. with all like their background synths and their patch well, we changes. Have, and we stuff have like we that. have that too because of, we have I mean uh, computers running uh, the synths. Since yeah, we don't have a keyboard player and. Don't want one. So is I know that the other guys from the band aren't technically here right now, and I really, I really don't know how um, deep your knowledge is about the gear kind of world because that's that's my forte. That's yeah. the stuff that gets me excited. Yeah, I know. Um, I know what they use. Are you? Are they running all like digital like Axe effects or oh, campers no, now? No, no. Oh, they're no. still using tube amps. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sick. Bjorn he's using Marshalls. Okay. And uh, Niklas is using uh, EBH. Uh, fifty one fifty three or uh, I I mean I love the original fifty one fifty but uh, I think he's I I'm not sure which one he uses but mm-hmm. I, uh, is there a three ones it's a one two th- um, yeah three there's ones. the newest th- one from the EVH lines fifty one fifty three okay uh, maybe he's he's running the second edition but anyway uh, and um, they're still killer amps yeah. anyway um, they play Gibson guitars um, and. Uh, Peter, he's playing Ibanez. I know he has a signature line with Ibanez. Yes, he does. Sounds killer. Yeah, Bjorn has one with uh, with uh, Gibson. Or I, I think it's Epiphone, Epiphone right now. Epiphone, yeah, but he works with uh, the company. Anyway, um, and he actually plays his Epiphone live too. Really? Like the, his custom guitar. He used that. Uh, uh, which is based from his favorite Les Paul guitar. So It's a uh, Les Paul Custom Pro, if I remember correctly. Must be and uh, Peter's playing um, uh, EBS, I think. So yeah, that's fair. Um, tell us a little. And I use the Shore mic. Yeah, <laughs> Shore wireless. Um, yeah. what what in ears do you guys use? Uh, oh my God, you put me on the spot here. Um, <laughs> uh, if it's no pressure, by all means. No, it's no pressure, but uh, I don't I don't remember the the Jeffrey Horner or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the brand. Okay. Um, they're really good. <laughs> you, should, you should ask some of the crew guys in there. You know? but, <laughs> if I get an opportunity to talk yeah, to the yeah, crew yeah, guys, yeah, I'd yeah, love to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. here's what gets me excited. But can you tell us a little bit about the... Uh, there's my voice cracking again. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, search for the new drummer? We're on search. That's the thing. We went to L.A. without having a drummer because we didn't want to have that in the way of writing. We didn't want to have mm-hmm. any auditions, get to know the guy or, you know adapt to their playing style or whatever whatever so we went to to the studio and we knew that there's a lot of studio musicians around in LA so we thought that would be any problem to get someone to play what we wrote mm-hmm. uh, but uh, Joe he was working in the studio with Howard Benson our producer so he came highly recommended and he started to play uh, on some tracks and we were like awesome you know the guy has a great attitude he cares about his instrument uh, Play pearl drums, by the way. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, so he uh, he played all the tracks, and at the end of the the recording, we asked him, "It's like, can you record everything? Do you want to be part of this band?" And he, <laughs> said, he said yes. So it was an extremely smooth 
uh, transition from from uh, no drummer into having a new drummer. Absolutely. Uh, what studio in Los Angeles did you record in? It's called West Valley Studios. West uh, Valley. Uh, so it's with Howard Benson and his team. Okay. Yeah, because I'm starting an internship with uh, Outer Loop Management here in the right. next uh, two or three months after I graduate, actually. Right. And I'm, he's looking for some studios to have me intern. Well, uh, it's a, a, it's a, it's a great studio, and we uh, recorded through a neat desk. Ooh. One of the old ones, and it was awesome. Gee. Great sounding desk. I'm sure, man. I'm definitely sure. Okay, uh, I kind of want to kind of want to tease your brain here for a second. Uh, back in 2015, in the uh, Charming America tour yeah. that you guys did, you were here at Stage AE back. Yeah, I think it was May 2015. With all that remains supporting and periphery, ironically. Yes. Uh, I remember that show very, very well. I remember halfway, like three or four songs into your set, there was a guy in a banana suit all the way at the front of the stage. He wanted to be like, How are you, sir? What kind of beer are you drinking? I couldn't hear because I was all the way at the back of the bar. And you're like, That shitty beer. Uh, and then you gave him a little bit of your. What beer was that? Oh, that. I've been had I had a few beers <laughs> through the years. I don't remember. All I can say is I don't I don't drink crap. You know. I totally understand. I'd rather drink water than drink uh, crap beer. I totally understand. Yeah. What's your favorite beer? Oh, that depends on the company, uh, how I feel that day, and mm -hmm. so on. Pat, Joe, you can pass. <laughs> uh, very slowly. And, but I, I like all kinds. I mean, I, a good craft beer. You know, I like stouts. I like IPAs. I like porters. I like sour beer. I, I do all, do them all. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, I'm Some a big beer guy as well. Created with love and passion. You know. Yeah. Um. I know. Um. You guys also have your own restaurant back in Gothenburg. Twenty one twelve. Yeah. It's it's great. It's Peter's and Pierre's restaurant. So oh. Okay. It's not in flames, but yeah. It's a, exists, yes. It's definitely on a bucket list yeah. whenever I travel over to Sweden. It's a really there. nice place. Uh, good good food, good burgers, and uh, good good beer. So. I'll definitely have to keep that in mind. Um, okay, um, I do think that, I do think I've hit just about everything right. that I wanted to hit. Uh, how long is your guys' tour lasting? Uh, this goes to, uh, I think, last year was like 19th of December. Oh, wow. So. And then are you guys going back at home? Well, then it's Christmas. We're home like two days before Christmas or something like that. And then we do a UK uh, with Avenged and Disturbed in January. And then we do a small European run, uh, some, some really cool dates uh, in March. And then I guess I can't say more, but we are most probably going to come over here again. And now, are you... Festivals. Awesome. Is Disturb opening up for you? Not in the UK, no, no, no. I mean, Avenged and Disturb are way bigger in the UK than we are, so. Hmm. That, that kind of seems a little, that kind of seems a little backwards, don't you think? Why? I mean, you guys, you guys are based out of Sweden, so that, you think, I, has, I understand the metal's a lot bigger in the has, UK. It has nothing to do with where you're from. I guess that's true. That just seems a that just that just, that just interested me for a nah, second. No, nah, I mean these are hardworking acts, and I know Disturbed is absolutely huge across they, the they world. S they sell a lot of albums, and you know we it's 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 great to be supporting those bands, and and we get to play in front of a, a bigger crowd in the UK than we normally uh, get to play in front of. So I'm I'm stoked for that tour. I understand. Um, speaking of Avenged Sevenfold, have you heard their new album, The Stage? Uh, I heard that first song that they... The uh, Stage. It, is that what it's called? I, I heard that first song. Yeah, because I was seeing a lot of articles about how how low of album sales it sold in comparison to... Uh, in comparison to, like... Um, Earlier albums? City of Evil, they're self-titled. I think it sold, like, 78,000 in its first week. Yeah, but, uh, I mean... Uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, the the, the whole um, uh, industry have changed a lot. You don't sell as much as you do. I mean, and what counts really is when you're out there playing live, if the people will come, you know. And a lot of hard copies, physical, have tr shifted into digital. Uh, and we see, I mean, it's, in Sweden, it's, it's crazy. We have like 90% streaming music, I would say so, uh, and 10% and physical. 
It's it, becoming it, a lot more popular yeah, in the United it, States as well. And, uh, I mean, it is... It, it's tougher, you know, for, for bad... You can't... It's hard to live from just selling music. You have to work, 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 and be out there and tour. That's why, you know, the band's constantly touring. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where the <coughs> revenue mm -hmm. comes from in the music industry these days. Yeah. Well, I think I've hit just about every single thing that I've wanted to hit. Um, I really want to thank you for your time, Anders. No, thank you. Really a pleasure. To meet I just you. coughed into my hands. <laughs> that's <laughs> fair. That's fair. Um, hopefully, I can get a chance to share a beer with you sometime tonight. I mean, that would be amazing. Cool, man. I thank could... you very much for having me. Thank you so much. Right. This is DJ Benevolent Brendan signing out. Well, I lost the